So in today's video, we will be talking about how diodes are formed. So let's start off with the purpose of a diode. Why do we use a diode in an electrical circuit? Well, a diode is useful because it, what it does is that it allows current to travel in one particular direction while blocking the other way. And that current travels at the a direction at which the uh, tip of uh, the triangle, and the triangle is simply just part of the symbol of the diode, simply travels at which the tip is pointing to. And in this diagram, we have a uh, current that is flowing to uh, the right. So since it is flowing to the right, it cannot go to the left. And the reason being is because of how the diode is structured. So we're going to go a little bit deeper and to discuss how this diode is formed. So this diode is simply what is called a PN junction. A PN junction. And the P and the N stands for something. Now this may seem a little complicated, so let's go dig a little bit deeper in how uh, the PN junction works. And to do that, we have to talk about semiconductors. So semiconductors is a substance that can conduct electricity to control a flow of electrical current. And the basic structure and overlay of semiconductors are simply atoms joined together and these atoms have to create really strong bonds and these bonds would simply be able to conduct electricity and to control a flow of electrical current. Semiconductors usually consist of atoms that have four valence electrons and these atoms would bond with other atoms that have four valence electrons as well and that continues on to create these really strong bonds. And in today's society, most of our semiconductors, if not all of them, are silicon. So it basically looks like this. So we have these silicons that are bonded all, the, all together Now, let's talk about the type of semiconductors. So this is what we call an intrinsic semiconductor where there are no external uh, factors that are affecting these bonds. These bonds are perfect, all of them are silicon, but what happens if we add, let's say, an atom that doesn't have four valence electrons? Well. That being said, that semiconductor is going to be extrinsic. So let me just uh, rephrase again. And in this particular structure, we have an intrinsic semiconductor. And we, when we add external factors, when we add external factors, that's simply what we call doping and this doping will be now explained so when we dope a semiconductor what that does is that is that it makes it an extrinsic semiconductor And when we apply external factors to it, there's going to be, it's going to go in two different directions. So one direction is uh, making it n-type. 
So what happens in, when we have n-type is that we make the semiconductor more negatively charged, let's say. And we're doping it uh, as an electron concentrated. So we're doping the semiconductor uh, to be more electron concentrated. And to do that, let's say that we took out the silicon that we had previously. We took out the silicon that is in the middle and then we're going to replace it with an atom that has five valence electrons. And that extra electron would simply be uh, the, uh, electron, the electron and the thing that makes the semiconductor electron concentrated. So we put, let's say, arsenic into it. So there are four valence electrons that are bonded uh, to other silicons. And then we have this extra electron. And that extra electron is going to make our semiconductor extrinsic with an n-type. Now, moving on, we have uh, what happens if we do it the other way around. So this time it is... Uh, we, what we do is we take an atom that has only few, that has fewer than four valence electrons. Well, what's that going to do is that it's going to create a hole in our semiconductor and making it more positively charged. So that would basically be called a p-type semiconductor, hole concentrated. And to do so, we're going to have our uh, picture again with our silicons. And this time, as I've said, instead of having an atom that have five valence electrons that would make it electron concentrated, we're going to have an atom that has only three electrons that would make it whole concentrated. So we have, let's say we put an atom here, boron, it has three valence electrons, so it's gonna bond, let's say from this silicon, and then to this silicon, and then to this silicon. And then we're gonna have a missing hole here. It's missing something because, well, there's a hole because there is no bond here. There is an electron flowing in uh, the silicon, in this silicon, but there's no electron here. So s since there's uh, no electrons that can uh, bond, this since this boron cannot bond with this silicon, then there's going to be this hole. And that is why we uh, call it, we make this, we label this semiconductor as hole concentrated. And finally, that's why we call it p-type. So now you may be wondering how does the semiconductors and what I've talked about, the type of extrinsic semiconductors uh, I've analyzed relate to how diodes are formed. Well, what we have is that is to conclude what happens if a p-type and an n-type uh, gets together. So we have this p-type, let's say, uh, area here where it is whole concentrated and I've labeled a symbol and simply um, a, a transparent circle would represent it whole. So this p-type will consist of all these holes filled with billions and billions and billions of silicons and you know billions of other atoms that have uh, fewer uh, valence electrons than these silicons. And then we have these n we have this n-type barrier here where it is electron concentrated, represented as a uh, filled uh, circle. So now we have these n-type, we have this n-type barrier 
where it contains billions of silicons and other billions of less uh, atoms that contain more than uh, that contain more valence electrons than the silicon have. And the question is, what happens if these two plates bond together? And this is where our uh, diagram leads us. Well, if I didn't say this, these extrinsic semiconductors want to achieve back to its equilibrium state. And that equilibrium state would be the state at which I've said uh, where it is in a neutral state where all the atoms are bonded and there are no holes and there are no electrons. Simply in this diagram that I've uh, drawn about intrinsic semiconductors. So what that basically means is that p-types p-type want to have electrons to fill in its holes and n-type wants to have its extra electrons uh, dropped out. And when we put these two together, basically what happens is that the electrons travel from the M type to fill in the holes and the gaps in the P type. So I'm going to label the plates again, P and then N. And then we still have these electrons, these uh, electron concentrated area here in the n-type and simply some of the electrons are going to travel into the p-type and what that does is that it makes a, a positive ion in the n-type we'll label this positive ion indicating a plus sign and then we're going to induce negative ions into the p-type And the reason being is that the p-type is receiving negative charges and the n-type is uh, releasing the ele electrons and getting positive charges. And the positive charges represent the positive ions and the negative charge represents the neg negative ions. Negative charge induces negative ions. And I don't want to forget these... Uh, transparent circles right here. So electrons, as I'm going to sum up again, these electrons are traveling to fill in these holes. And this creates this kind of region. And this region would also be would be called the depletion region. And since there is such a transfer of these electrons, current is induced in a particular direction and that current is basically going to travel at which the direction that opposes the electrons so simply in this case what we have right here the current is traveling to the right so it travels to the right and i'm going to label it like this current current is traveling to the right and it basically sums up how a p-n junction works. And it's a coincidence, right? We have a p and an n, and that basically uh, summarizes what a p-n junction is. A p-n junction induces a current to travel in, wind, in one particular direction, and that is dictated by the formation of which uh, the areas are doped at. So we have a P right here and we have an N right here and that current is going to travel to from the P to the N. And the PN junction is simply what the diode is. And that is how diodes are formed simply from how semiconductors are doped. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the near future. So now that you know how diodes are formed, I highly recommend you to check out my next video where we are going to 
analyze how diodes affect parts of an electrical circuit.